Hello, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm trying something new. I'm going to read something that I had found written in this notebook that I had found when I was cleaning up some stuff. And I was apparently getting ready to do a video on this and got interrupted, put it up, and forgot about it. Well, it's no better time than present to talk about this. Some of you may have been wondering about being taken up in a rapture. There are some people that don't even believe in a rapture. Do you know that? How sad for them. They just think we're all going to grow old and die. And there's no such thing as going out, you know, out in a rapture. Okay. <laughs> well, we have two examples in the Old Testament of people who just disappeared. Went with God. Never did die. Never had to go through a funeral for them. Everything's backwards in this. <laughs> I'm using just my camera. I'm hoping to save this video to my desktop, pull it into my new software, edit it if I want to, do anything to it I might want to. Maybe I can lighten it in there because it's kind of dark in here. Ooh, I have this bright little light. Let's try this. Ooh, that's too much. I, <laughs> that's too much. Not a good light. So anyway, it starts off, my notes now say, Enoch, quote, walked with God and he was no more, for God took him, unquote. That's in Genesis 5, verses 21 through 24. Enoch was taken shortly before the flood. Now listen to this which destroyed everyone except Noah and his family. Now, try to put this scenario into modern day, today. Some of us are going to be taken and we will be no more. We'll be with God because God will take us. All right. So, uh, let's see. Shortly before the flood, which destroyed everyone except Noah and his family. And Jesus has said, you know, just as in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. For they will be eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage on that day when the floods came. And swept them all away. Okay, I don't have that one written in my notes. It just came to me. And that's what's going on. We've got weddings going on again across the street. It had slowed down. We hadn't had any in like a year from COVID. The lie of COVID. Anyway, I better not get off on that subject. I don't want the video pulled. All right. Says they or he, Noah was not perfect, but oh, nor was Enoch, I'm sure, because he was human. But he loved God and obeyed him. They both did. He believed God. When God told Noah that he was going to destroy the earth and everything on it with a flood, he believed him. So Noah built the ark. Living on that ark was hard. Now, think of this. It was not fun. It was not life as usual. There were sacrifices to be made. They didn't have their usual home comforts. They had to put up with the animal stench, I'm sure. Lots of animal care. I'm sure there were areas there where they somehow grew things to eat. Or maybe they just, the whole time it took Noah to build the ark, the women, towards the end, would have been maybe baking up stuff, perhaps, that would keep a year. Because they were in there a year and so many days. Okay, it rained 40 days, but they were stuck in there over a year. All right. All right, so, uh, so Noah built the ark. Living on that ark, Jasper, be quiet. 
Oh, that noise he makes. Isn't that some kind of bark for a little bitty dog? <laughs> anyway, so Noah built the ark. Living on that ark was hard and troublesome. But he and his family survived to repopulate the earth. And all those animals. That's Genesis 6, chapter 6 through 9. Okay? And then it happened again with the prophet Elijah. He was another true man of God. That's in 2 Kings 2, 1. And it came to pass when the Lord God would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. He wanted Elisha to stay there, not follow him to where he was going to be taken. But Elisha knew this was going to happen and insisted on traveling with him to wherever he went. 2 Kings 2, 3. The sons of the prophets came to Elisha. Do you know that God is going to take your master away from you today? They knew it. He told them, excuse me. Yes, I know it. Hush, be quiet. He didn't want to hear it. He knew they were, his master was about to be taken. See? The sons of the prophets. The prophets had been told. They told their sons. The sons went to Elisha. Oh, do you know your, your master is going to be taken away from you today? And Elisha knew it. So why isn't it feasible that God would tell us that we're going to be taken away as well? Of course he will. This is repeated as they go on to Jericho. The sons of the prophets there asked Elisha the same thing. Do you know that God is going to take your master home today? He answered, Yes, I know it. Hold ye your peace. <laughs> Second Kings 2 Kings 2.5 Now, verse 6. is going. They're going on to Jordan and the same thing happened. Second Kings 2 Kings 2.7 Quote, and 50 men of the sons of prophets went and stood to view afar off. They wanted to watch this thing. And they too stood by Jordan. Unquote. Verse 8. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters. They divided. And they crossed over on dry ground. Just like what Moses did in, in the parting of the Red Sea. And they crossed over on dry ground. Elijah asked Elisha what he wanted before he was taken away from him. He said, I wanted, he said he wanted a double portion of his spirit to be, he said, I want a double portion of your spirit to be upon me, is what he said. 2 Kings 2.11 He was taken in a chariot with horses of fire. Can you imagine? We could literally be taken in chariots if that's what God wanted to do. Okay, so he was taken in a chariot with horses of fire in a whirlwind. That's verse 12. Elisha saw it. In summary, the prophets knew what was going to happen. Elisha showed faith by believing it was going to happen. He was rewarded by getting a double portion of Elijah's spirit or power. Now, Something that the Lord revealed to somebody, I don't know if it's somebody on Team Jesus or someone they that follows them. They have, a, it's either a word or a vision from the Lord that says, um, 
when we go outside of time, we'll get our glorified bodies, we'll come back. Oh, I know what it was. Somebody, the way Kathy explained it to us one night, and this has been a while back now, that we're the first 144,000, that we're like the first witness. We come back, we're going to help train, teach, heal, get people saved, do all kind of ministry. We will do great exploits, get people ready for the second rapture or weed harvest, which is spoken of in Revelation chapter 7 as the multitude too large to number appeared before us in heaven. And the angel asked John, who are these? And he said, well, you know, my Lord. You know, like, I don't know, you know. Who are they? And it says, these are they who come up out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes white in the blood of the Lamb. They were given robes of righteousness. They will cry no more. They will hunger no more. They will thirst no more. So if you're left behind, don't you give up? Don't you give in? Don't you take that thing that will steal your soul? You know what I'm saying. So if God, so I put in here in my notes, so if God could do this before, he can do it again. And he will tell us beforehand when it will happen. Those of us who walk with God like Enoch and Elijah will be taken to heaven without dying. And I believe it may very well. Okay, this is where this is back. This was written in 2019. When I thought I got that message from the Lord about July 17th. And. There is something to the number 717. It does mean rapture. To pluck up. I think it can mean to harvest. I'm not sure. You can look that up. Hebrews. Hebrews or Greek. I can't remember. But anyway. this That's how long ago was this was written. And I forgot all about it. But anyway. So clearly that didn't happen. And there was a reason for that. Um. But he has given this number to at least five of us. Yeah, there were, there were those two women. They had biblical, mathematical proof. I mean, a lot of people really thought July 17 could have been the day we were going. And I thought this year, really, I did think this year would be the year. But we're still here. But Tabernacles is looking really promising. See, I had not yet put together. I don't think I was on Team Jesus back then. No, I'm pretty certain it was later that year. Maybe the beginning of 20. Not sure. But anyway, we were discussing this one night. About how Jesus went up on the Mount of Transfiguration. Is what's titled in, in my Bible, in the NASB. He transfigures in front of, let's see, Peter, James, and John. And Moses and Elijah all of a sudden appear. Why Moses and Elijah? Why do you think it wasn't Enoch and Elijah? The word Moses has been coming up a lot lately in our studies. And it, the word Moses means to draw out or to take out. As in to be drawn out of the water. That's why he was named Moses. Okay, so it's kind of like the Lord's just confirming to us that we're all going to be like Moses being drawn out before harm comes to us. All right. But to enter into the kingdom of God at all, even after death, you must be born again. Amos 3 7 says, Surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secret counsel to his servants, the prophets. And that's the truth. And how to be born again? 
Okay, I've got some scripture references here, and those are not the references we need. But Revelation 3, verses 10 and 11, that's in the section on the letters to the churches. And that is to the church of Philadelphia, where it says we... Um, how see how does it go something about we'll be escaping the tribulation to come i can't quote it right now right offhand and since i have my camera recording me i can't just stop it go look up something and be still recording i don't think i've never tried this before on this computer so i am going to stop the video and see if i can pull it into my new software I could look that scripture up, type it out, add it, maybe with a picture. I'm going to see what I can do. <laughs> and you'll get to see the finished. <laughs> my hair has been giving me fits lately. I chopped off my sideburns too short. And they're like little baby hairs. They're real fine. And they don't want to do anything. So anyway. Um. And I cut my seat. Y'all, when you get older, you go bald. <laughs> I start to go bald from here down. So <laughs> I saw Jesus come soon before I go. I lose all my front hair. <laughs> I will wear a hat, y'all. I will. I wear a hat or a wig. I got a wig. I could wear a wig if I wanted. Or I might wear a hat. <laughs> I don't know. I just want to go home. I want to go home anyway. Tabernacles sound real good to me. So anyway, oh, I was talking about that and I stopped myself because it wasn't in my notes. <laughs> um, Peter said, Lord, it is fitting that I put up booths for you and Moses and Elijah. And right at that moment, he went back to his human self non-glorified body and the two of Moses and Elijah disappeared and was like what <laughs> yeah can you just imagine that happening to you the Lord takes you up on the mountain and they appear and the Lord turns into his glorified body and he's like they'd be like ah you know well I just wonder what it's going to be like for us when all of a sudden we're in our glorified bodies and going up, you know, or are we going to be like instantaneous in the blink of an eye there, you know, like not sensing any kind of travel. There have been lots of people with rapture dreams, rapture visions that they sense a traveling, a being plucked up and going fast, but it wasn't scary. Oh, sorry, my nose itches. What does that mean? <laughs> Anyway, this is on 18 minutes already, so I'm going to stop it and see what I can do. Oh, I found out yesterday there was a big CME that came, it's supposed to be affecting us today. And I'd be interested to know if any of y'all had any symptoms. Can I do quotes in front of my camera? There are <laughs> symptoms. I've been having a headache all day, but not real bad, just enough to, that it's like, it's not you know usually a couple aspirin takes it away and it, i'm okay but it could be that cme and uh i don't know other than that i hadn't felt anything different or uh anything like that so anyway i hope you all enjoyed this little preview or whatever you want to call it assurance that with God, all things are possible, and he will be faithful to tell his prophets what his plans are. So we can know and be prepared and be ready to go. Stay in repentance. Keep your slate clean. Live holy. And love God most. Love your neighbor as yourself. With that, I'll say bye for now brothers and sisters i hope i see you real real soon if not on video i mean if not <laughs> up there on a video okay bye for now talk to you later